In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the x and y intercept of a graph on our TI Inspire calculator. So if we look at this animation, what we can see is we can see a point on the curve. And as the point comes closer and closer to its intersection point with the x axis, we can see that we're getting closer and closer to zero on the y axis. When we reach the intersection point, we can see that y is equal to zero. Again, as we're coming up through the graph, and we're getting closer and closer to the second intersection point with the x-axis, the y value is getting closer and closer to zero. And when we reach the x-axis, the y value is exactly zero. Similarly, when we're looking for the y-intercept, we can see as we get closer and closer to the intersection point with the y-axis, x is getting closer and closer to zero. And when we actually arrive at the y-intercept, the x value is equal to zero. So this gives us a clear method how to find the x-intercept or the y-intercept of a graph. For the x-intercept, we just let y equal zero and we solve for x. And to find the y-intercept, we let x equal zero and we solve for y. So let's say we're asked to get the x and y-intercepts of the quadratic function y equals x squared plus 3x minus 2. So there's a lot of ways to go about doing this question, but the easiest way to do it on our calculator is just to graph the function. So I hit scratch pad, graphical display, and I just type in the equation of my function. So we've got x squared plus 3x minus 2. I hit enter, there's the graph of the function that I'm looking for these intercepts. So we can see more or less where it crosses the x-axis, but we want our answer to a high degree of precision. So one way to get this is to actually just graph the x-axis into the calculator. So if I hit tab, I've got my y2, and I'm just gonna graph y equals zero, since that's the equation of the x-axis. Up pops the second graph, this one in red, and I can clearly see where these two graphs cross each other. So if I do an intersection of these graphs, this will be the point that I'm looking for. So analyze graph, option number four, intersection, choose my lower and upper bounds, and I get my point of intersection. Here we can see the x-intercept is at minus 3.56. Now that's only to three significant figures. If I needed this to a higher degree of accuracy, I need to go into the calculator and change my float settings. So this is the first intercept. We can see we've got a second intercept. So we go and do the exact same thing again. Analyze graph, intersection point, and just choose the upper and lower bounds appropriately. I get my second intersection point at 0 0.562. Finally, how do I get the y-intercept? Well, what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to put in an equation for the y-axis. The equation for the y-axis is x equals zero. So in order to graph this, I can't actually graph a function. I need to graph a relation. I type in the equation x equals zero. That's the equation of the y-axis. I can see it's gone in there in blue, and now I just find the intersection point between this and my original function. So again, menu, analyze graph, intersection point. Now the calculator is asking which two functions do you want to find the intersections between? So we actually have to choose the functions. So I'm gonna choose my original graph, and I'm gonna choose the y-axis. Now what it wants us to do is plot a box within which you want to find this intersection. So I do my box more or less covering the intersection point that I'm interested in. So I get my y-intercept at zero, negative two. So this is a fairly easy way on our GDC to find x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Just find where does the graph intersect the x-axis? It has the equation y equals zero. And find where does the graph intersect the y-axis? It has the equation x equals zero. So does every function have to have an x-intercept or y-intercept? So this function here has no x-intercepts. It doesn't cross the x-axis at any point. And this function, it has no y-intercept. It has a vertical asymptote on the y-axis, i.e. a line it never crosses. So there's one final thing to be careful of, and that's to realize that the graph will only find intersection points that are displayed on the screen. So for example, if we put in the equation x squared minus 8x plus 10, and we are looking for y-intercepts of this function, currently displayed on the screen, the graph isn't crossing the y-axis. 
if we try to find an intersection point between this graph and the equation x equals zero, we wouldn't get any intersection points. So if we hit menu, graph, relation, we put in x equals zero. And then if we try and find an intersection point, nothing's gonna show up. So we can choose our first corner up over here, our second corner down the bottom right, and we get no intersection found within the specified bounds. So how do we resolve this? Well, what we need to do is we need to actually change our view. So we go into menu, we go into window zoom, and we just zoom out, option number four. So I zoom out once or twice, and here now I can clearly see the graph is crossing the y-axis. So if I go again into analyze graph, intersection, and I choose my bounds appropriately, I get my intersection point at 0, 10. So the two key things to be aware of are not every function has an x-intercept or a y-intercept, and your GDC is only going to find intercepts that are displayed on the screen.